Hey everybody, it's Katie and Mike. Say hi, Mike. I, can't, I say hi, but I'm looking away. Because you were trying to get us out of the parking spot? Yes, I wanted to make sure that car didn't back up. Oh, well, good for you. You no, got I was us. keeping my eye on it. Yeah. Uh, so, happy Halloween time again. We are back for another spooky movie. It's like after mid, it's one o'clock in the morning. So you'll forgive me. Well, you were just on Central Time, so it's really more like midnight for you. It's so late. It is late. Also, I was only there for like a week, so I don't think I even told I told my manager this week. I'm like, I don't think I've I think I'm still on Eastern Time in my brain, which is why like I felt so discombobulated. But anyway, happy Halloween, everyone! Again, uh, last time we we watched Crimson Peak. And this time we've seen a totally different kind of spooky movie. It's uh, Cooties, which came out this year and is out on like what Amazon? Yeah, it's an Amazon Instant Video. It's also on like I'm sure it's Apple on like iTunes. It's also, yeah, it's also on like uh, Google Play. It's on Google Play. Yeah, and probably originally on demand. On, originally, I actually checked for it on on demand with our cable. It was not there. Huh. Uh, I was going to actually watch it on the Google Play service because we had Chromecast, but then I, you know, we left that up at your, at your place. Yeah. And every way we could watch, you know, this movie not through, you know, hooking my computer through my computer second monitor was pretty much this not keeps, going. I'm well, sorry. We're trying to charge the my cell phone while we're in the car, and it keeps keeps unplugging. I think we're good now. Um, but yeah, so this is an indie movie, uh, and it, it, it stars a bunch of people that I actually recognized. Um, and it's produced and stars Elijah Wood, and essentially it is the story of what if the zombie virus was passed through children at a, at, um, a summer school, like summer school courses. At a summer school, elementary school in rural Illinois. Is it really awesome. rural? It's more no. like suburban suburbs. Suburban Illinois, I yeah. guess. Um, I don't think they actually shot in suburban Illinois. No, they definitely didn't, but it was supposed to be it was supposed to be near Chicago. Uh, essentially, uh, this chicken factory that makes uh, that makes super processed chicken nuggets uh, had a, like a bad batch of and you see it in the opening in the opening credits uh this really gross chicken process but there was like a contaminated there were contaminated pieces and they got sent among other places to this school in in like suburban almost chicago area uh called what was it fort chicken fort chicken they never explain it either like clearly like there just were a lot of chickens being Farmed in that area, which is why the t which is why the factory, I guess, was near there. I don't know. Um, so you see this little girl take a bite of it, and that's like the first thing you see. Um, so uh, so the story is is that Elijah Wood character is doing his first day of uh, of substituting for the summer class where he's, and he's trying to write a book at the time, so he's very like, oh, well, you guys, I, I wrote a book. So, I'm a writer. I'm a writer, so from hopefully, York City, hopefully you'll be able to learn from me, and the kids are just not impressed. Uh, and, uh, and there are a bunch of other teachers there, played by various, uh, various character actors and comedians, including, uh, Rain Wilson, Jack McBriar, uh, uh, Allison Pill, Nassim Pedrad, and uh, Leigh Wannell played the one, like, health guy. Yes. Um, and to, to different degrees of funniness, like, I, I wasn't really super impressed by, the, like, the humor of, the t like, the teacher's jokes uh, at the beginning of the movie. I thought they kind of didn't hit the mark. Uh, but they, I think they got funnier as they went on in the weirdness of the, of the situation because that one girl who ate one the chicken nugget uh, turns into a zombie and he, she infects uh, two bullies who then, who then during recess end up infecting pretty much all of the students. Uh, in a, and I will say like obviously the, the 
I think the the producers even said that you know one of their inspirations was just the fact that like how quickly uh, illnesses get passed in school, how quickly the flu gets passed or lice or whatever. So they they did a really specific shot of the kids really quickly all contracting, all getting scratched or bitten, um, and getting infected. During recess. During recess. And then the black teacher dies. The black teacher who had no name and, and had no, no lines. lines. Until they said, and I no, recognize not that, Dr. Yeah, Martin. yeah. And I recognize that. that actor. Like, that actor is a, like a character actor that I've seen in things before. And he just dies immediately. So to... Do- <laughs> Fair, it is supposed to be a satire of horror movies, and they were really playing up the, oh, these are the cliches in horror movies, so we're going to really play up those cliches and really, really, Yeah, you know what I, mean? I guess, but it was still one of those so things, like, really? So they were like, still really? being very straight with that, with the, with the satire of Okay. Because they were really playing up on some horror tropes, and they were sort of just trying to play that line of some horror tropes and they they sort of try to buck those tropes later in the movie that we'll get into but and and trying to be surprising you know what i mean yeah so we'll get into that later but still like they, they played them very straight so that you would believe some hooks later yeah um so essentially uh then they have to start it's a base it's essentially the basic uh zombie movie situation where they're held up and they all have to try to figure out what to do and they're all a big group of survivors. They're and basic Shaun of the Dead. Yeah, it's very Shaun of the Dead. It's clearly it, it's clearly in the same vein of Shaun of the Dead. Um, as far as the character actors, um, uh, like Jack McBrayer is, is really funny and it. Allison Pill has a lot of good moments. Um, and uh, Ray Wilson was good, but like I don't know. Sometimes some of his stuff didn't play quite quite right. Same thing with like Lay. I don't know how to say his name. Lay Wannell, but he plays like the the health guy, and he play, the one of the teachers is really like he doesn't know how to talk to people, and like his whole thing is that he's kind of a little wacky and kind and, of out there. We find there. out later in the movie that like he he just flat out says like he took a spike to the back of his brain as a kid and his brain is a little bit messed up which is why he says the wrong raspberry i don't think it was raspberry no, it was something like raspberry. that and then one of the per- people corrects him with word and he goes yeah word <laughs> so some of this stuff was okay some of it was really funny and then some of it i was just like why why did they make that joke um like one of when they first he's real- the one that recognizes in the school he goes oh look carnage outside and that yeah, actually made me that made me laugh just because I was not expecting that response. Um, and there were a few others too where where he was actually he really get he some had of the best funnier line. And he had once he got his paces, it did feel like I don't know. It felt like I could like he was funnier in parts. Yeah. Um, uh, and yeah, I will say a lot of the way that the characters played off each other did end up being really funny. But there were also some parts that fell flat. Especially there, there at the was, beginning. A lot of the stuff in the beginning where, like, Elijah Woods being introduced to everyone, I was just like, ugh, this is just dragging. Yeah, it falls flat in a lot of spaces. Um, there's also, like, some of the kids, even though most of them, like, quickly turn into zombies, like, you get introduced to some of the kids, including, like, this little piece of shit kid um, who Patriot. is, like, yes. It, first of all, he's every kid that you dislike, every, like, nasty, like, bully kid like like wormy kid that you knew in in grade school that like who knew that they could get away with like just treating you like garbage uh and his name's patriot and the first thing i said when or the first thing i thought when i heard that was oh man i bet he was like he's the right age to be born on 9 11 and and when elijah wood goes wait your name's patriot he goes i was born on september 11th and i was because god sent me and when I turn 18 I'm gonna I'm gonna join the Marines and kill some and then he said he said a not nice term for Muslim people uh, so yeah and then I was just like and I said to Mike like if that kid becomes one of the survivors and lasts the whole movie I'm turning like I don't want to see this movie and luckily he's like one of the first kids to bite it 
Now, Grant, he's still in the movie, but he stops talking because he's a zombie. He's surprisingly a very effective zombie. Surprisingly effective. I'm really zombie. glad that he never joined the Marines because, oh my God, he would become like a psychopath. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, a lot of it, it just ends up them being like trying to figure out what to do. Um, surprisingly, not that many kid deaths. But I guess you could only show so much, even though there there was at least one. I had to look away from a lot of this, but there was at least one that was just brutal. Um, but there was a lot of adult deaths. Um, there are a lot of kids just flat out murdering adults in this movie. There's a lot of gore in this There's movie. a lot of gore. Because we just, here, again, here we just is. saw Crimson Peak. And someone had asked me after I told, well, after I said online that I watched Crimson Peak, I said, they asked like, oh, well, does it have a lot of gore? Because I'm not really, I'm like, you know, it's bloody, but it's, there's not a whole lot of gore. And when, but then we were watching this, I'm like, oh, that's where the gore went. It's all in this movie. The thing is, like with this movie, it's a lot of over the top gore. Gore. Like, yeah, like, but some of it is just, it's still gross. Like, it might not be realistic, but it's still gross. Yeah. At points um, it is kind of realistic, but at t other times it's really not. All right, would you, do you want to try to go right into spoilers, or um, do you want to wait? No, we can keep talking. We okay. have more to talk about. All I, right. I would also point out that a lot of times it is sort of really unrealistic gore. And there's some really over-the-top ones. Yeah, but I also looked away a lot. But there are just parts where, like, like some of the, one of the girls' pigtails just rips off. Oh yeah, that was that was like that ooh. Was a hard one to watch. And then, like, and one of the kids' face, like his face, was chewed off. Like a lot of that stuff, I just can't watch it. So I looked away. Um, so just a heads up if you're gonna watch this movie, even though like some of it, I would not know if it'd be realistic, but it's still like it's still gross enough that it makes you queasy, you know. Um, See, I'm, I'm, I have a hard time with, like, realistic blood, but this movie did not bother me at all. I just didn't want to, I didn't want to hear the noises and the, the See, like, that makes me, that makes my stomach all gross. I can't, I have a hard time watching the opening scene in The Martian, but this movie really never gave me any problems Or, like, all. oh, the one where he has to do his own when wound. He, yeah, when he dresses his own Well, wound. that, that freaks me out, too. I know, but I'm just saying there's a difference in the... Yeah, goodness. I can understand that. Um, so, I, we won't get into, like, some of the stuff that happens in the second half. There, It does get funnier as it goes on, and I think a lot of the character interactions um, make it funnier once they have to be in that, like, crazy sort of setting. Um, I would say, obviously, you can't see it in theaters. I would say that if you're if you're a horror fan, uh, this might be a good one for Halloween. And if you're a fan of Shaun of the Dead, I might give it a shot. Or if you're a fan of zombie movies and you want to see it kind of spoofed a little bit, I think that that's a fair... Like, if you're specifically a fan of zombie movies. Yeah. I think that there's enough there that... Um, that or if you're a fan of any of the actors, I think that there's enough that everybody's kind of given good stuff to do in it. Yeah, a lot of television character actors in this movie. Yeah, there really are. Um, so yeah, and I and like I said, like it's it's a pretty cheap rental, and uh, and you can kind of pretty easily watch, watch it. it. Yeah, wherever. as long as you're not moving in between two states at the same time, and you bring up. You put all your digital streaming devices up on one TV and one. In the oh other yeah, state. so that's what happened. So Mike. He he brought up the because we drove up last week to help me move, uh, and he brought up the Xbox and the uh, and also the, the Wii, Wii U, which are the two ways that we usually watch like watch um, streaming movies. streaming movies, uh, specifically like Amazon Prime. Because I think Netflix. you can well yeah, but you can watch Netflix on your computer. I know. But, but anyway, um, so. Uh, so he it didn't we couldn't actually get the Xbox to work. So Mike was like, "Oh, we'll just we'll have you just do um do the Wii U then. I'll let you keep that up here." And I was like, "Well, do you want to take well, down the well, Xbox?" Well, and Mike was like, "No, I don't want to bring it." But, well, that wasn't really the whole th like you can watch uh Netflix from the Chromecast and all that sort of stuff. And you can do everything from the Chromecast pretty much except for Amazon Prime. But I was going to just leave the Wii U up there because I just figured I wasn't going to play it. And I figured you'd probably play it more than me. Yeah, i got to get around to it. But, but anyway, so when we... Because well, you just got your new Splatoon me or the Amiibo, and so I figured yeah. you'd play that more than I would. 
I need to get around to it. But anyway, so when we did this tonight, um, we couldn't get the, the HG to work because it, it doesn't work for the computer when we connect it to the TV. Yeah, we had to connect the... We had to put the Mike was annoyed. TV. Well, it's because it takes away my monitor, so it just... Blah. Well, it is the TV. My second monitor is the television. So yeah, that's I why know. it takes away my monitor. All right. Um, so yeah, before we, before spoilers, I will just say, yeah, it was, I think it will definitely be for people who like horror movies, because if you don't like it, I don't know if the humor is enough for you to, to check it out. Whereas with like, maybe with Shaun of the Dead, I think you can maybe like, it's, if you're that a fan is, of comedies, that Shaun of the Dead is for you because Shaun of the Dead is a very, while it is a horror movie, it's like, it's light horror. It's very light. But it's all, nah, I wouldn't say that. Well, There's not, some, it's not very, look, it, but, um, it's this more one, comedy this one definitely horror. leans towards, like, the gore and stuff in a way that I don't, I don't actually think Shaun of the Dead does as much, just because I think there are more cutaways in Shaun of the Dead. But, um, I, yeah, I think, like I said, I, I actually did enjoy it, but I would never watch it again. Like, that's enough for me. Um... Yeah, and that's that's about all I got to say. So, uh, if you want, we will go into spoilers. 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 And now for spoilers. Um, I don't know what like what can we spoil about this movie? Like I guess the end. All right, like the ending is probably one of its weakest points. Is so weak. Um, like I don't even want to go through like all the ways that they escape. They escape from the school. Rain Wilson's character has a feat of heroism, and they make it to the next town over, which was kind of funny because they kind of do that whole like this town is slightly better, so we don't. Look. But they go like, oh, we're we're gonna be in Danville. One of them says like, at least it's not for chicken because you know they just had a zombie apocalypse, so you get that. But then the sign to Danville actually says Danville population blah blah blah. At least we're not for chicken. Where I thought that was one of the funnier jokes of the movie. And then you find out, oh crap, it it didn't just hit it it spread. Whatever happened, it spread. You know, I think it More also... More one town got affected. Yeah, well, I mean, like, at first they think that maybe it had just spread from from their own town, but then like, that the kids got out, but then they look and they find out that at least in this town, there was a um... Sorry, I'm trying to drink my... We got shakes. I'm gonna drink my shake. At least in this town, there was a birthday party that happened to have them at, like, a infected chicken yeah but what's what's what were they at what uh, like a discovery zone-esque like play place which they end up getting trapped in again I think it was called something like jump and play I remember jump in the name yeah but it was essentially like if you've ever been to discovery zone or something of the like Chuck E. Cheese but like Chuck E. Cheese was always more like a that was like arcade Chuck e. and stuff yeah Chuck E. Cheese was always more of an arcade than like a jump castle climbing thing climbing yeah thing. So they're almost lost, and it turns out Ray Wilson comes back, and he has a daring rescue of them. He has the Japanese guy with him. Well, there was a, a Japanese janitor we didn't mention, which was kind of race. There were some jokes around his character that were kind of not great. It was pretty bad, actually. He is probably the worst character in the movie that, like, you you don't want that kind of character in your like, it, like, it's pretty, it's pretty, there are a lot of stereotypical jokes about him being a samurai-esque character. Um, he has, like, seaweed in his refrigerator in his little office where he lives. It's really not the best part of the movie. It's one of the worst. That character was not well planned out. Just do anything else besides that. Yeah, exactly. So, um, but yeah, so Rain Wilson saves them. They get into, there's this, um, I don't know what he was, who he was. Was he just a guy in a van outside, Was or was he working there? No, he's the crossing guard. Oh, okay. That's he why was, he's outside in his van. Okay, because, like, seriously, like, I thought he just didn't have a job they, after they a while. They established because... that at the beginning of the movie, he was the crossing guard. He, he had the, the, the little banner, and he had the stop sign. Mm. And, okay, I remember, but the, yeah, he was on drugs the whole time, and uh, Jorge Garcia uh, plays him. And um, but he comes in in his van, and he saves them, and they all drive off. 
and they're like, where are we gonna go where kids won't go? And then the movie ends. And, um, like, look, I, I, I wonder if they were trying to, if they were trying to do it like, it's uh, like playing it up for a sequel. Um, I know that, uh, it's Elijah Wood's, um, production company so I'm assuming that he he went into this hoping that he'd be able to make more stories with these characters that's still a really terrible ending to the movie I mean like I also know he's a really big horror fan well yeah like he basically I believe his new the production company that's doing this are doing like mostly horror movie you know like going for those kind of movies but my point is, is that it's still a really terrible way to end the movie. Like, the birds can get away with this kind of mo- with this kind of ending. This just feels like you didn't want to to do a full resolution. It feels like you you had two concepts running in your head of them being trapped in this school and making it out, but then you also wanted this show, this epic showdown at a Discovery Zone esque place, and. The the in between, which was very short, mind you, yeah, just didn't work. It didn't sandwich the two together very well at all. It was just yeah, and like and the one kid patriot who again is like, he felt like the final boss, but then they had like a whole other scene after it. Yeah, after I know. he dies, you really felt that that kid should have been his death should have been the capper to the movie, and it wasn't, and it wasn't. And that, that was one of the things that really fell out of place. It feels like they they ended the movie with his death. And then all of a sudden you're, you know, and then you could have had them dri- driving into the next town. And then you could have closed the movie out right there because it was pretty much over. But then it feels like you're starting up the sequel right there. Yeah. It sort of feels like the sequel began right there. Yeah, it was, uh, I don't know. There were just problems with it. Um... So, um, yeah, I don't know if there's, I don't know much more to say about it. This might be a short, a short spoilers. Um, I will say, like, go, just going back to what I liked about it overall, I thought that the kids acting when they were zombies was really good. Like, they got a lot of really great, like, character, like, the, ki- the zombies themselves had character. And I thought it was just interesting how they were, how the kid actors were able to pull that off. Or, um, I thought also the world building as far as like how the, how the virus worked was interesting because it turns out that, um, if you are a puberty or above, then it doesn't actually turn you into a zombie. It only makes you like pretty sick. It like basically gives you the flu. Um, which makes it a little more interesting because then, like, you literally will only be fighting zombie children this whole time, which is different from a lot of other zombie movies. And it sticks with the whole theme of, like, the kids spreading stuff to other kids. That if that if adults could get infected, it wouldn't be nearly as... And that's sort of where you get your title, too. Cooties. Yeah, exactly. Um, I will say one of the least interesting parts in the movie excuse me I just burped the one of the least interesting parts in the movie um, there was this shot or like this little tiny little montage of the kids playing outside while they're zombified and they're like and they're playing with body parts from and it doesn't make any damn sense like they have the eyeballs and they're playing with them like marbles and they're using a head like a like a tether ball and so and one of the kids is jumping rope with the with like intestines and i get that it's a satire but that just like that that wasn't in line with like the kind of satire the movie was going for and it just seemed way too over the top silly and I was just like, that wasn't really needed. You didn't need, because it was basically like a passing of time little montage, and you really did not need that in the movie. Um, yeah, it was, like I said, uh, we did like it. I just don't think I'd ever want to watch it again. It's not like my favorite movie of the year by far, and the ending was a real, like, I don't know, they couldn't well, come up with something better. Let's compare it to other direct-to-rental movies that we've done. Like... 
Um, the one, what was it? The, the, I, the one you know, what was that movie where they go? The one you love. The I one think. you love, yeah. Yeah, that one, that one was probably the best of the, of the direct to, I mean, but it's a very different kind of movie, but it is an indie film. Uh, that one I liked a lot, even if, like, even if my brain is still trying to, like, figure out exactly how, how I interpret the ending of the movie, you know? Um, but that one I really liked a lot. And then, what was the other one that we saw that was, uh... Uh, there's safety not guaranteed, but we did actually technically see that in theaters. No, we definitely saw that in theaters. No, I'm thinking of the, um, the one with, uh, Samuel L. Jackson as the, oh, as yeah. the president. Big game. Wasn't Big that game! The game is the president. He's gonna get, he, someone's gonna hunt this, him. This was better than Big Game. This was better than Big Game. But, again, it's a very different movie. Um... And I think that the rest of the direct-to-video... It's not really direct-to-video, we just, we just watch direct them. Direct-to-on-demand? Is that what you would call these movies? Direct-to-on-demand? Yeah, I guess. But a lot of the other ones we've done where we just drive out to get, like, shakes or something have been specifically for, like, things, like, older movies that we've seen. Like, the Alien movies, when we watch the Alien movies. So, um... Yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else to say about it. I don't have anything. anything. Yeah, like, it's it's a good, it's a decent movie. It's a decent horror parody, but it's like it's not Shaun of the Dead, but it's not bad, and it's just it's passable. So from what I, I mean, can see, that worth... stupid Scouts Guide to the Apocalypse or whatever that's coming out, that seems like it's in the same vein and won't be nearly as good. I could be wrong. It just every trailer I've seen for that movie, it looks terrible and annoying and awful and this one wasn't wasn't nearly so bad um there's still parts of it that were kind of like that didn't quite hit the mark but i think it, it's a solid rental especially if you're a fan of like these two genres being mashed together yes okay well with that i think it's time for us to go so okay. and finish these shakes and finish the shakes so katie and mike just plain something.com and we'll see you later.